which allergy medicine is best for seasonal allergies? I'm going to answer that for oral tablets, nasal sprays, and eye drops based on clinical studies and side effects. And I can tell you right now, the most popular ones are not the best. And I'm going to give you information that you've probably never heard before. And at the end of this video, you're going to be an expert on allergy medication. Hi, I'm Vina. I'm a board certified pharmacist in the U.S with over 20 years of experience. I practice in Northern California where we have horrible allergies. If you have a friend, a family member that suffers from allergies, please share this video with them. If I don't cover the specific medicine that you have a question about, ask me in the comments. Let's begin with the most popular category, oral antihistamines. There are four main oral antihistamines that can last 24 hours. The first one is Claritin with the generic name Loratadine, Allegra with the generic name Fexofenadine, Zyrtec has the generic name Cetirizine, and Zizol has the generic name Levocetirizine. So first, Claritin. The good part is that it does not cause drowsiness, but it takes the longest to start working. After you take it, it takes about two hours to become effective. Now, if you take it every day, every 24 hours at the same time, it will just continuously be effective. According to a 2023 meta-analysis that looked at 18 different studies, loratadine was shown to be a bit less effective than the other oral antihistamines. The next one is Allegra. The great part is that it is very effective and it works within one hour. The downside is you shouldn't take it within four hours of certain kinds of fruit juice. Those are orange juice, apple juice, or grapefruit juice. Um, that's because it will decrease some of the absorption. You also shouldn't take it at the same time as antacids that contain aluminum or magnesium. Next is Zyrtec and Zizol. They are both very effective and they both start working in about one hour. The downside is they both could cause some drowsiness. Zyrtec can cause drowsiness in up to 10% of adults. Zizol, it only causes drowsiness in about 1% to 3% of adults, so much, much less. This is because cetirizine is a 50-50 mix of both levocetirizine and dextrocetirizine. These are mirror images of each other. Levocetirizine is the active part that works. Dextrocetirizine is the part that causes almost all of the drowsiness. So Zizol is just the active part of Zyrtec minus most of the drowsiness. How effective is levocetirizine? In a 2002 study, levocetirizine was shown to be a stronger antihistamine versus both loratadine and fexofenadine when it came to allergic skin reactions. These skin reactions included swelling and redness. Skin reactions are different though than seasonal allergies. Current studies show that Zizol and Allegra are comparable for seasonal allergies. And in the US, they are the most effective and well-tolerated oral antihistamines that you can get. You might be wondering why I didn't mention Benadryl which is also an oral antihistamine, and it's used all the time for severe allergic reactions. Well, Benadryl is actually not a stronger antihistamine than ones like Zizol or Allegra. It's been shown that it does not have a higher affinity for the H1 histamine receptor in the body, but the reason that it's used for severe allergic reactions is because it works fast in about 20 minutes, but it causes tons of drowsiness. So that's why I don't recommend it for seasonal allergies. In fact, the active ingredient in Benadryl, which is diphenhydramine, is used in a lot of different over-the-counter sleep medicines, things like z -Quil. The drowsiness can hang over the next morning. And in fact, in the US, pilots are not allowed to fly their plane if they've taken diphenhydramine or another drowsy-causing antihistamine in the previous 60 hours. Sometimes, even when we take the best oral antihistamine, we still have nasal stuffiness. Have you ever had nasal congestion where you can't breathe out of your nose? And it doesn't matter how much you blow your nose because there's no mucus to blow out. It's just stuffy. This is because histamine causes the blood vessels to expand, which leads to plasma leaking into the nasal tissue. 
This causes the tissue in and around your nose to swell up. Sudafed is a nasal decongestant. It works by constricting the blood vessels and preventing them from expanding and leaking out into the tissue. In fact, Sudafed is the D part in Claritin D, Allegra D, and Zyrtec D. It stands for decongestant. In the U.S., you have to purchase Sudafed-containing products at the pharmacy counter and show your ID. It helps nasal stuffiness. Excellent, but be careful because for some people, it can cause difficulty sleeping at night. Next are nasal sprays. There's two main kinds, steroid nasal sprays and antihistamine nasal spray. Steroid nasal sprays are the most effective medication we have for seasonal allergies. They work better than all the oral antihistamines, especially for stuffy nose. And since the nasal tissue is very close to the eyes, they will sometimes also help with ocular symptoms. Now, some of you are out there right now saying, I tried Flonase. It didn't work for me. Here is the most likely reason why it didn't work for you. Steroid nasal sprays don't work right away. In fact, a lot of people don't even get benefit the first day they use them. It'll start working within about a day or two, and it'll continue to get better and better over the next couple of days and even couple of weeks. So you really get the best benefit if you're using a steroid nasal spray every day during allergy season. So if you're just using a steroid nasal spray now and then, whenever you feel like your allergies are bad, it may never work for you. So you can take an oral antihistamine tablet and a steroid nasal spray together every day until the steroid nasal spray gets a chance to kick in. Common steroid nasal sprays are Flonase, Flonase Sensimus, Nasacort, Nasonex, and Budesonide. When it comes just to efficacy, they all work just as well as each other, but there are differences. They're not all equal. And Flonase, in my opinion, is not the best one, and I'm gonna tell you why. Flonase was one of the originals. It contains alcohol and it has a scent, but there was a newer one called Flonase Sensimist. This one is alcohol-free, scent-free, and it's a mist instead of a squirt, so it's gonna have less dripping. Nasacort and budesonide also are less likely to drip just because they use less liquid per squirt. There are some side effects to these sprays. One of the possible side effects is bloody nose, which is much more common in kids than adults. To decrease that risk, try to spray away from the inner septum, which is the center part of the nose. Instead, angle the sprays slightly to the outer side on each nostril. Here's a summary of the nasal sprays. They are all alcohol-free except the original Flonase. Nasacort, Budesonide, and Sensimist are less likely to drip. Sensimist and Budesonide are scent-free. So Sensimist, Budesonide, and Nasacort, those are my go-tos. And Sensimist is the only one that's an actual mist. Now for a product called Astapro, which is azyl astine. This is now the first nasal spray antihistamine for allergies available without a prescription in the US. It is not as effective as a nasal steroid spray. However, it has a huge advantage. It works fast. It works within 30 minutes of using it. So it works the day you use it and just doesn't work the day you don't. Steroid sprays just can't be used that way. Astapro antihistamine spray versus oral antihistamines. When compared head to head, actually, the antihistamine spray is more effective than the oral antihistamines. And Astapro also helps nasal stuffiness. And this is where oral antihistamines have trouble. Now for the eye drops. So remember how histamine causes your blood vessels to expand in your nose and it causes stuffiness? Well, it also causes the blood vessels in your eye to expand. These blood vessels in your eye, when they're dilated, is what causes your eye to appear red. And histamine also attaches to the nerves in the eye, and that's what triggers itching. There's these older generation eye drops, things like Navcon A. They contain ocular decongestants that shrink the blood vessels in your eye and make them appear more white. And they also have antihistamines, and they work great but don't use them. If you use them for more than a few days in a row, the blood vessels in your eyes get used to it. And then when you stop using them, they expand and you can't get your eyes to stop looking red. And it could take weeks to get your eyes back to normal. So there's a couple of ingredients that I'm gonna recommend that really don't do that. Ketotifen is the active ingredient in Zatador and Alloway. And it's an antihistamine eye drop that works for about 12 hours. 
and you use it twice a day, and it works okay, in my opinion. Olopatadine is the active ingredient in Pataday, and it comes in three versions. 0.1% is used twice a day, 0.2% is used once a day, and it lasts 16 hours. And then there's a 0.7%, which is called Pataday Extra Strength. That one lasts a full 24 hours. They add a polymer to it to make it more viscous. Because it's thicker, it stays in your eye and lasts longer. If you're getting value from this video, please let me know by liking the video or giving me a comment. So what's more effective, ketotifen or olopatadine? There was a meta-analysis done over a collection of studies comparing these two ingredients head to head. The authors concluded that olopatadine was more effective than ketotifen for eye allergy symptoms. And this was using the lowest olopatadine dose. We do have evidence that shows the 0.7% is more effective than the 0.2% when it comes to redness and itching due to ocular allergies. And there was no difference in side effects with the 0.2 and the 0.7. So my pick for allergy eye drops is Pataday 0.7%. Here's a summary of my picks based on published clinical studies. For oral antihistamines, Zizol or Allegra, but Astapro nasal spray works faster and it's more effective for stuffy nose. For nasal steroid sprays, it would be Sensimist. For eye drops, Pataday, 0.7%. If you have questions about any other medication or any of the medicines that I've covered, feel free to leave your question in the comments.